Hello, my fellow gamers. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Yakuza Like a Dragon. Last time, we played Fifty Shades of Play. I want to knock out some of these things so I can get grinding going a little bit better. So let's get off to that kind of start. Now he's on the phone. Who's he talking to? Yes, I'm doing fine. Thank you for your concern, Song Lee. Aww. Oh, guess who's the folks? Thanks. It's Yo, Yvonne. What'd she say? Oh, nothing. She just asked for an update on the situation. That's all. Yeah? But it feels pretty good knowing a babe like her is looking out for you. I'm blessed to serve one such as she. The Jungi Han I served before was quite the blessing as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. If I'm to talk about Jungi Han, I'll need to provide some backstory. Cool with me. I got plenty of time. Ha. <laughs> Then I hope you're prepared to sit for a while. Sure, I'm all ears. My father was one of the stray Chingwon Mafia I mentioned earlier. And to speak further, he was a lowly thug left behind in a foreign land. In my youth, I was relentlessly beaten by my father, in addition to being neglected by those around me. Home, school, no place provided me with even the slightest bit of sanctuary. Thinking back on it, I'm sure I was a rather dissolute child. Well, you're not alone in feeling like you got no place to go. Plenty of people feel that way, even civilians. Feelings of isolation are really that common, huh? <laughs> not sure if I should be comforted or not. Sorry, didn't derail the story, did I? The real Jungi Han had also been raised in a poor, neglected environment like me. But rumors of his strength, intelligence, and ambition started to swirl. And as the men from my father's generation grew older, Jungi Han started gaining more and more power. In fact, it was thanks to him that the stray Jingon found any success in Kamurocho at all. While the Tojo clan was being choked by anti-violence laws, the Jingon Mafia were steadily gaining a sense of existence. Sounds like he must have been pretty cool. Yes. But my father, who underestimated him as some young greenhorn, failed to prove his worth and was left trying to catch up. A staunch alcoholic, he used what drunken wit he had to try to get close to the young leader. So, eventually he worked out a plan. He would mold his own son's face set him up as a body double, and offer him as tribute. What? I was drugged by my father, and this was done to me while I slept. No way! He did all that just to impress the boss? When he was presented with a body double, even the real Jungi Han could only force a smile. But he saw what had gone into my face, and he respected the effort. So, he said it was a fair offer, and took me under his wing. And what's your father doing now? He's long since passed away. His health was already in steady decline, and for what it's worth, I'm sure he wasn't opposed to dying at the bottom of a bottle. That's a shame. I guess you two weren't super close then. Mm -hmm. Jungi Han kept me at his side as much as possible so that I might learn his mannerisms. Strangely enough, it was the only place that finally felt like home. I was very much his servant, and he was very much my master. But in spite of that, we shared a lot of laughs in the long time we spent together. A lot of drinks as well. And though I was his double, it would be rude of me to say that we came to resemble twins. So the way you're talking right now, that's something Junki Han taught you? The real Junki Han had a way with words I never will. And when he walked into a room, you knew it. Try as I might, I would never reach his level. Hearing you say all that makes me even more curious. About what, may I ask? Well, um... Did he dress as sharp as you? You know what? I 
I've always thought you were a pretty sharp dresser. That's kind of you to say. But you said the real Junki Han was even more refined or whatever. So does that mean he was as stylish as you? He was indeed quite stylish. His fashion sense had a great influence on mine. Oh, uh, yeah? Looks like a kill and close the match, huh? <laughs> you take interest in the most unexpected things. <laughs> yeah, that's how I roll. I needed that. But you know, despite me saying sorry, there's still one thing I gotta ask. And that is? Isn't it about time you told me your real name? Ah, uh, still a no, huh? Ha, <laughs> just a little taken aback is all. I have no problem telling you. Really? When I was first brought into this world, I was given the name Yonsu Kim. Yonsu Kim? I have no intention of returning to that name. Not when the real Tungi Han has already passed away. The real one took a bullet to the head, yeah? Correct. There was conflict with a group from Hiroshima that had made its way into Tokyo. As far as I'm concerned, the Jingon Mafia died along with him. At the time, I was given the role of staring down the other hostile groups within Kamurocho as Jungi Han. But with their real boss dead, the remaining Chingon Mafia and Kamurocho were nothing but paper tigers. Should our enemies have discovered this, we would have been ousted and probably killed. If it were me, I probably would have gotten the hell out of Kamurocho, left everything behind. Yes, that's precisely what I did. The few remaining members at my side did the same. But seeing as the Jingon Mafia was all I'd ever had, I had no place to go. No refuge where I might reconvene with my allies. I was lost and alone in the world. Like a man dying of thirst in the desert, surrounded by a hungry pack of wolves. Sounds like you had it rough. I found a faint glimmer of hope in the Korean community here in Japan. But... Even they refused to accept me, as I was nothing but a criminal to them. Thinking on it now, I should have expected as much from those living an honest life. But still, in my confusion and dismay, I challenged them, asking why they would abandon one of their own. I get that. <laughs> it was enough to make them call the police, and I'm sure that under normal circumstances, I would have been taken away. However... Huh? Come on, man. Don't just leave me hanging. The police officers were imposters. And instead of being incarcerated, I was brought to my new home, Yokohama Ijincho. So those fake officers... Were they? Members of the Komiju, sent to retain me under the orders of Samui. It turned out that the Komiju was a place that many former Jingon members had drifted to. Those that distanced themselves from Kamurocho slowly but surely found their way there. Oh yeah. Songkui did mention something about the Komijul having roots in the Jingon Mafia. Hmm. Indeed. Komijul is essentially a safe haven for refugees. That's why they tend to keep quiet and remain exceedingly closed off. For many years, they spied on the Jingon Mafia and Kamurocho from a distance, keeping close watch on their movements. I was fortunately saved by the hand that the Komijul had extended to me. Moreover, Song Hui told me what had happened to the real Chung Yi Han. That he had been shot in the head by an assassin hired by the Hiroshima Yakuza, taken by surprise from the shadows. An assassin? So what'd you guys do? You kill him? No. By the time I'd learned of his existence, he was already dead. I wasn't even given the chance for revenge. I spent many of the following days in despair. But even though I was in such a hollow state, Sung Hui patiently waited for my recovery. She was more like family to me than my abusive father could have ever hoped to be. A sister to replace the brother I had found in Jung Yi Han. Frankly, nothing would hurt me more than to betray her expectations and disappoint her. And Kasuga-san, as for you and me, hmm? <laughs> I 
I'm wondering what sort of boss you will be. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do. <laughs> I don't remember ever becoming your boss. Right now, I think drinking buddy is a better term, don't you? I see. <laughs> then I will do my best to live up to that title. That was a 10 minute talk. Holy cow. I guess that's finally it for introductions. He sure is shy, that young Su Kim. Alright, his bond's up, which means he can get experience in the back line and do the foreman. No. And then none but. Oh no, Zhao, finally. Yo, how goes it, Kasuga-kun? <laughs> look at you. You're blending in already, Zhao. You know it. Turns out drinks taste a lot better without bodyguards watching your every move. Yeah? So that was the life of the former leader of the Yokohama Lumong. That shit was dumped on me from the day I was born. Kind of a drag. Growing up knowing you had a fucking script. Well, the nice thing about alcohol is it tastes better if you complain while you're drinking it. Oh, sure. Enjoy my childhood trauma. <laughs> but I guess after all the shit you've been through, you've earned it. <laughs> I mean... Your dad led the Yokohama Lumong before you, right? What's he doing now? Yeah, he died a few years after retiring. Right in his bed. He's lucky he never got shot or stabbed. Hey, yeah. That's a real achievement for a gang boss. Yeah, I guess so. And he only managed it by sleeping with one eye open his whole life. No matter how you slice it, it's not a great way to live. I sure as hell didn't want to lead the Liu Mong. But Mamuchi, this shit was always up his alley. You mean Lao Ma? What even happened to that guy? I haven't even seen him since we kicked his ass during the whole Omi Alliance thing. Don't you know what the Yokohama Liumang does to traitors? They use this filling that goes inside meat buns. What? You serious? Right now, Lao Ma is... Bao Ma? <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking hilarious. I was kidding. You think I'm the kind of guy who'd do that? I mean... <sighs> You're not the type. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a joke. Uh, him being your right-hand man and everything. And you're not the kind of guy to turn a brother into a meat bun, no matter what he did. <laughs> Appreciate that. I like to think I don't give off that vibe. I did stop short to give him Mabuchi what he deserved. After all the shit he put me through. What does that mean? Did you kill Mabuchi? <laughs> oh, you're softer than any bun out there. Look at you all worried. I just don't like the thought of that happening to people. Even creeps like Mabuchi, who murdered your boss without a second thought? Even creeps like him. All I wanted was to knock that guy's lights out and hand him to the cops. <laughs> but by the time his lights were nice and knocked out, the Omni showed up, and you never saw him again, did you? You really did kill him, didn't you? Alright, I'm bored of messing with you. I didn't kill him. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> had a feeling you didn't. Why is that? Hard to explain, but uh, I don't get that vibe from you. Not one bit. In fact, it always kind of felt to me like your hard ass act was just a show for your boys. A front you put on. Ah, that's a little harsh there, eh, Kasuga kun? You don't strike me as the type to lock guys up or torture them either. Especially one of your own, like Mabuchi. He and I call the same place home. Nothing could make me take his life. But now, Song Hui's in charge of the Yokohama Liu Mang. It's up to her to settle things if Mabuchi shows his face again. He's the reason Komi Jewel's a pile of ashes, so... I don't think she'll be treating him as nice as I would. <laughs> Probably not. Which is why I gave Mabuchi the heads up. And told him to leave Ijincho. Really? 
Well, that's taking things into your own hands. A few of his boys went with him, and I forgave the ones that wanted to stick around. It's a hard reset. Clean slate for everyone. Song Hui was good with that. You two are more generous than I thought. Mabuchi brought in a lot of cash for us, and he was damn consistent about it. The fact that he kept a bunch of shit hidden from us was an issue, but I could deal. So you knew about it and you just let it slide? The guys from my dad's generation were pissed, for sure. Kept saying Mabuchi was breaking sacred laws of the gang. But what did they expect from a sadist in Japan's most famous gray zone? And that he'd have a moral compass or some shit? <laughs> Seriously? How about we toast to Mabuchi? Wherever he might be. What? Well, he's no friend of mine, but what the hell? If you can cheer to him, I can too. Now we're talking. Well, good. He fell over one. I mean, being level one doesn't really help, but you know what? There's one person I've never really talked to in here. It's her. <laughs> Let's chat with her. What's up? You have a sec? Of course. What's up? Oh. <laughs> You're a fan of roses, huh? Exactly. Yeah, it's a fan of romantic random. I don't have any bouquet of roses either. That was useless. You can't really talk to Eerie Chan, and you can't. And there's not really a point in anybody talking to anybody else at the same time. Alright, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to go grind for the next ever. Because there's no way I can move on with the story. And I don't think we should do well sub-stories for a little bit. So, there should be a fun time of me just doing whatever I want. So next I'm going to Yakuza like a dragon. Yakuza like a dragon. I'll get the name right one day. We're gonna go kill some people. I'll see you then.